OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, so welcome everybody. My name is Susan Gare and I am the Catisol president and I am also an OTAN subject matter expert and my name is Christy Reyes. Um, I teach at Miracosta College in a non-credit ESL program, and I am also a subject matter expert for OTAN. Welcome, everybody. So we have a link here for you if you want to download these slides. Let me get it and put it in the chat box so you can go ahead and get the slides. What happened to my? I gotta find my chat box. Hold on. And make sure that you um, click panelists and attendees. This is a webinar room. So if you just go with what the default is, it only goes to the panelists. So make sure you choose panelists and attendees on the drop down menu so that you can talk to everybody in the room, not just us. Um, so there is, did I put the, yeah, the link to the slides are there. If you want to follow along with us, you're welcome to. And Christy, I think this is for you. If you could just let us know um, what you teach, if you could type in the chat a quick hi, and if you teach ESL, if you teach CTE, and maybe specifically within CTE what you teach. ESL, Chris, thank you. Um, ABE, adult secondary, math, other. Uh, if you're in administration, if you can let us know that. So we'll just, uh, it will be helpful for us as we go forward in today's um, workshop to see who teaches what, because um, we'll try to have you grouped by subject area. So anybody else? I see Chris is ESL. Okay, Evelyn ESL. Chien Mei uh, ESL. Great. ESL. 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 It's like we're all ESL. Is anyone not ESL? <laughs> well, it's good because we okay. are ESL teachers as well. We do have some lessons that were created for this workshop for those who teach other areas, but um, it looks like we all speak the same language here, ESL, so that's helpful. Yeah, okay. we can divide up by level then. Yes. We divide up, yeah. Okay, so these are our objectives for today. Um, Triple E is a framework. It's kind of a theory research-based framework, and we will make this framework as interactive as possible. Um, so we will describe what the three E's are and what they mean. We'll learn how to use a rubric to evaluate a lesson, and we will critically analyze and discuss a lesson using the rubric, and that's where the wild stuff will happen that Anthony referred to. Okay. So this is for you, Christy, I think. Oh, you, you're We're muted, just curious, um, in your mind, what does good technology integration look like? So there is, if you have your phone handy, you could scan that QR code, or we're putting in the chat a link to a Padlet wall. And <clears throat> Susan is going to demonstrate. Do all of you know Padlet already? If you could type yes or no in the chat. I think there's a space here. Hold on. There we go. So Padlet is, you don't know? Oh my goodness. Well, we could even take a moment maybe to demonstrate it. It's really nice because um, you create an account, you create a wall, you share the URL with your students. They don't need to log in. They don't need a password or anything. Um, you'll see in the bottom right corner is where you press the um, plus button. You um, Usually I have my students type their name in the title, but if it's anonymous kind of feedback that you're getting, you wouldn't have to have them um, share their name. And then there is an area, as you can see uh, Susan is demonstrating, um, where you can enter text. Um, there are so many things you can do with Padlet. They have a wall that is a map of the world. So for ESL teachers, you could, you could create an account and you could share the map wall and students could put a little um, post-it 
on their home country or their hometown with a picture and image, you can put all kinds of content in, on here from a GIF to a YouTube video, a photo, they, re, they could record a video within Padlet. It's a really useful tool. So um, I believe that if you do a little search on OTAN, you should be able to find an article, maybe even a video about how to use it. You know, just like any website, it changes from time to time, but um, the most recent changes have been really great. So if you can just click on that link in the chat, put it one more time, for the Padlet, click on that link. And um, if you still are only seeing your Zoom window, just go to view options. And as Anthony said, um, you can uh, minimize, I believe. Is that right, Anthony? I'm not sure what the words are, but um, you can then see your web browser. Just double click, click on, on that page anywhere and type in Actually, I can show different. them how they can do that by clicking on like View this. options, thank you. So you click view and options. I have to open, hold on. Let me just make this over here. I'm going to pull it over. It should be all. See, I have two windows open now, but it's not the right two windows. <laughs> so this would be my Zoom room. Thank you. So as Anthony yeah. put in the chat, if, if all you're still seeing is your Zoom, um, screen, just go to the top, the little black button that says view options, exit full screen. And then um, once you click on that link in the chat, you'll see the Padlet wall and just click anywhere and type in a few words. If you were to um, see any classroom, maybe a classroom today, you know, these days, maybe before the pandemic, if you were at your school and you walked by a classroom, um, what would you see, what would you recognize as high quality technology integration? So you can see that um, the posts are live, Laura and Colleen are um, typing. So we'll give you a few minutes to do this. And um, I imagine you're gonna hear some things that match up with your definition. And hopefully you'll expand your definition of what good tech inte integration looks like for adult education. And if you're having trouble getting the link to work, it looks like there's a couple of extra spaces. So I wanna show you what that looks like. So when I put in the link that's from here, I go here and it has, this is doesn't work because there's some extra spaces. Oh, there just erase those extra spaces like that and then it works. So Evelyn says it's accessible to all students. Laura says technology used as a tool to learn lesson content when students are engaged. We're gonna be talking about that. There's one of the E's. Students able to show what they've learned. Great. Yeah, I think you're right, Colleen. Um, when we're teaching language, um, and we keep in mind Bloom's taxonomy at the top is create, having them do kind of like project based learning to show that they can use the language that we've taught them. Technology tools can be the way that they create their projects. So I think that, that those go hand in hand for sure. Okay. So it looks like three of you have given us. Someone put a yes. Okay, that was you, Susan, huh? And so you can see what Susan did. Um, if you create a Padlet wall, share it with your students, they can come in, they can like others' posts. There are options to vote and comment. It's a great tool to use. Um, pretty simple too. So I highly recommend, um, maybe you can put that up on your list of to do for this summer. Okay, Laura, technology uses a tool to learn lesson content where students are engaged. I think we already, yeah, I think Susan already read that, but yes, you have one of the three E's there, Laura, engaged. And we got something from Sherry, students can work at their own pace and different levels. Differentiation, mm-hmm. 
Yes, I was going to write that in the comments, but I don't. I think I would not spell it correctly. So. <laughs> okay, should we move on, you think? Sure. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So we're going to talk about some models um, of tech integration that have come before the triple E. We'll kind of uh, see what you think and kind of give our opinions. And this kind of leads to the reason why we decided that triple, triple E is the really useful one for adult ed and probably the most useful model of all of them that we have seen so far. So the first one is Tim. What do you guys think, if you had to guess, what does Tim mean besides his name? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to try, take a, a, what do you think? Go ahead, type in the chat box. What do you think it means? And there's a little clue in the URL. Just take a stab at it, you guys. You can be wrong, it's okay. Yeah. Hello, Evelyn. Oh my gosh, everybody got it so far. Great. <laughs> yeah, technology integration matrix. And Christy's going to talk about this. Yeah. So um, Susan will open that up. Look at this. Wow. Now, this is out of um, University of Southern Florida, I believe. And you can see on the left columns, um, they're looking for students who are active. If you can go down a little bit, Susan. Collaborative, constructive, authentic, goal-directed. Those sound like a lot of words that really match up with what we try to do in adult ed. And then we have levels. So you could be at the entry level of you know, activeness, adoption, adaptation, infusion, transformation. I wanna ask you, I mean, we're not gonna go into depth, but if you clicked on any one of those cells, it will give you a fuller description of where you might be as an instructor, um, where students might be, and lots of video examples. What do you think of this? What, um, do you think this would be something you would like to use when you're creating a lesson to kind of gauge how well you're doing with tech integration? What do you think? If you could type anything in before I give my opinion. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that's, that's what I was thinking too. We're busy. An adult ed, all teachers, you know, we work on the weekends. We're always trying to come up with new ways to integrate technology and make our instruction better. And while this is very useful, um, I could see if I were a very beginning teacher or maybe if I was studying in a certification, um, you know, credentialing sort of program, and I was trying to learn about this, this could maybe be used in a class about technology integration. But for, for me, as a full-time teacher, a mom of two kids, um, you know, many pets and many other things in my life, to have to look at this when I'm planning my lesson, I don't think it would be realistic. I might wanna look at the videos to get some ideas how other teachers are using certain tools because seeing a model is always very helpful but it is too much. It is overwhelming for me as well. Okay, so the second one is the TPAC. And you might be, more people are familiar with TPAC than um, Tim. And um, so this is TPAC and you have technology, pedagogy and content. And then you have, it's like Ben's diagrams, Ben's cir circle, and you find out where you are, getting all three circles. Here are two circles, two circles, and two circles. And it has a, actually, I think our graphic here is better than that graphic. Um, so you want content knowledge, you want pedagogical knowledge, which we don't really use pedagogy in adult ed. We use andragogy, but the same idea. And then you have um, technology knowledge, technological knowledge. So again, I want to ask you, what do you think of this TPAC and have you heard of it before? And what do you think? Could you use this to help yourself with um, integrating technology? Go ahead and type in the chat box what your thoughts are about this one. 
Let us know if you've ever seen it before and if you have or haven't, whether you think you can use it. Mm -hmm. Laura says new, never hurt, but makes more sense to me, simple. You've never <laughs> seen this before? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we think for me, this this is actually the the version that OTAN's been using for some time. And and we think it's too complicated. Like um I I don't know how to integrate all those things and I wouldn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. And um and that's me who's a technology nut still would have a hard time using this. And the other thing about this, and I think Christy's going to mention this too, is it really focuses on the teacher instead of the student. This is my knowledge and my pedagogy and my content. It has really nothing to do for me with the student, right? Yeah, and I'd like to just add, I mean, this is a model of perfection. <laughs> I'm never going to be perfect. My circles are never going to be equal. I'm never going to be able to accomplish that middle point because I'm con constantly learning. So mm -hmm. like Susan said, um, again, while this could be helpful, um, I really want to focus on what my students are doing and how they're using technology a bit more. And so I'm, I'm going to do my best to make my teaching, my um, content knowledge and my technology know how, you know, I'll keep working on that continually. I don't think I can get perfect, but more important, when I'm trying out some technology with my students, I want to see how they react. So this doesn't really help me so much with that. So now we go on to SAMR. How many of you have heard of SAMR before? Evelyn says yes. Colleen says new to me, want to learn more. So um, SAMR has, it's kind of linear. It looks easier to understand, wouldn't you say, Christy, because it's linear. Um, but because it's linear, it doesn't work for me because personally, I'm not linear. <laughs> and I don't know, sometimes it looks like I need to be at the at the bottom here, like substitution is not so good and redefinition is great. But sometimes substitution is what I want my students to do. That's what is important for them to, to proceed in their learning. So I feel for me that this says, says that I need to always do redefinition to be at the at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'd and, like to add too, yeah. if you look at each description, description, it says technology, technology. So this one seems to be focused on the technology. The teachers kind of got a little bit of a role there, but I don't see student here too much either. And these are the three most popular frameworks that school districts have been using up until recently. And then Christy and I stumbled upon the triple E framework, which looks very similar to which one that we looked at earlier. Can you type in the box which one you think it looks very similar to? It looks somewhat similar. TPAC, yes. <laughs> and um, it makes TPAC, because TPAC is a very good um, model, but it's so complicated and it's so focused on the teacher. What Liz Kolb has done, and she's the creator of the Triple E framework, is she has made it focused on students. And um, she has made it very easy to use. And again, we have the Venn diagram, but we don't have three circles connecting with each other. We have only two circles connecting with each other. And then we have the all time engagement. So A here has no technology. If you have a class with no technology tools, then you would be in the A. B is engagement. And what Liz says is when you give students, a, let them use their phone or let them use an iPad or let them use a computer, automatically they're going to be engaged. They're gonna be focused on the device and they're gonna be doing something. That's, that's an automatic. But the question is, 
are they learning what they're supposed to be learning? Are there goals there? Are they playing games? And she always says this, you know, Kahoot's great, but if it's just a game that the students are playing and they're not doing anything with it, they're just reviewing vocabulary, it may not be the best use of the technology. So you wanna focus on their learning goals and then critical to engagement is what's called co-use. And co-use is where students have to talk to somebody else about what they're learning. That's really important for learning. Do you wanna say anything more about that and the engagement, Christy? Um, no, I'll just echo that, um, you know, students will be engaged even, you know, not on task <laughs> in the class. Um, I'm sure you remember the days when we were sitting in our classrooms and the teeth that, you know, the students don't realize that we can see everything that's happening in their texting. Well, we can, we can um, exploit the tool that they have in their back pocket, their little computer for learning purposes. So as Susan said, engagement is going to happen, you know, no matter what, but the other parts, the extension enhancement, the teacher needs to carefully plan. Right, so the first thing is engagement. And that, and as long as you put in your learning goal and you get your students, if they play a Kahoot game, they talk about it afterwards, like what did they learn? And there's some co-use you can make, you can get the first E easily. As a couple of you said, I'm sorry, I don't remember uh, who said what, but one of you said engagement, so you see it there. And another of you pointed out differentiation. So you were right on that these mm -hmm. are traits that are, um, included in a model of good technology integration. Right, so the second E is enhancement. And enhancement is exactly where you said differentiation. That is what enhancement is. Personalization, allowing the technology tool to help the student where they are, not where you want them to be. And it adds value and scaffolds and supports. So that's the second E. So the first E is engagement, the second E is enhancement, and the third E is extension. I'll let Christy talk about that one. So extension means that, you know, we're teaching things in our classroom that students can use outside of our classroom, relevant to their many roles that they fill as uh, employees, as parents, as community members, so that they can, you know, use the technology and the language for us ESL teachers, right, that it transfers to different areas of their lives. It has relevance. And E is the sweet spot, but we don't have to be in the sweet spot all the time. So that's oh, we don't why, have to be perfect? Yes, no. <laughs> it's good to know. But it's a good idea for us to try to add more co-use and B, because we're all we all understand engagement, but perhaps we don't do as much co-use as we could, and to try and get some C or and or D in our lessons. And that's what we're going to work at. So how do you know what, what you have and what you don't have? And this particular framework has a very simple rubric. So this is engagement. And um, if you're not sure what that meant by co-use, I, I mean no offense to anyone who uses a software program for your students to practice. That works very well for many students. But when students are just interacting with a publisher's software and the, they don't see their teacher or their classmates there, that, that wouldn't be co-use. So there needs to be some interaction, just like how students would use technology in their everyday lives to communicate with others, that's what we need to replicate in our classroom. So engagement has these three questions. It's a simple yes, no, basically. Does the technology tool help students focus on the learning goals, your course content, your lesson objectives with less distraction? Okay, if it's such a complicated tool that they're just getting frustrated, that would maybe be a, a no right there. Two, does the technology tool help to motivate students to begin the learning processes? Okay, so is it, is it something fun? Is it, do they see the relevance of this tool? And three, does the technology cause a shift in the behavior of the students where they move from passive to active social learners? That's what we mean by co-use. Um, you know, if you think about what you use your phone for, you're looking up information, yes, you, but a lot of your time is probably used with communicating. So that's what we mean here by active social learners co-use. Okay, so the second E, 
which is enhancement, does the technology tool aid students in creating content to demonstrating lear demonstrate learning? And I think this is something we all need to try to do more of because we are teachers, we create, we're used to creating content, but we should allow our students to create content because if they can create content that's accurate, then they've really learned our objectives. And I know it's, it's not that it's easy to, to actually get students, okay, you model something, then have them create something very similar. Wouldn't you agree, Christy? Mm -hmm. yes. Number two, does the technology create scaffolds to make it easier to understand concepts or ideas? If your tool is too complicated and your students don't have to learn the tool, then you're not creating the scaffold necessary to, to go with learning. So it's really important that you decide on which tools would most effectively help your class, teach the students how to use that tool and use it on a regular basis so that the students become more comfortable with it. And the third one is, do students demonstrate understanding with this wet tool in a way they could not with traditional tools? Are you just using a handout online? That wouldn't be um, doing that would, that would be the same as a traditional tool. You want to use the technology to enhance the learning, not to replicate what you can do traditionally. Worksheets, fill in the blanks, et cetera. Any comments there, Christy? I wanted just to say something about number two, because I did have an experience with this with a teacher I'm coaching. And um, she, you know, of course, she's teaching in Zoom. She's teaching an ESL class in Oregon. And she had never had students use Google Slides. She was so nervous herself that, you know, she thought that they would be set up for failure. So we talked it out. And so what she did, she created a simple uh, slideshow. She shared it with her students. And the first day they typed their name. That's it. And they could feel that they were successful. The next class they, um, lesson or class meeting they had, they inserted a photo. So that's what we mean really with, by scaffolding. You need to know what your students already know and not jump ahead too fast. So maybe I, this happens to me sometimes. I'm so excited about a new technology tool, but my students are not at, the, at that point yet. So you really do need to know your students and their, their abilities first. And remember that using technology tools and language learning, they're, they're, they're different animals. So your students could be very good with technology and very poor at language and vice versa. So um, once you learn who your students are, you know who, who can do stuff and who doesn't know. You know, somebody has great English, but they're afraid to turn on their phone or they don't know how to use the Wi-Fi. And somebody else who can't say, speak English at all, but knows everything there is to know about the computer more than you do. <laughs> so it's really interesting sometimes. Yeah, and I think with going back to the co-use really quick is um, just that, um, you know, we do this a lot in ESL and hopefully you do this too. Even in an online environment, how we're teaching now, if we're doing synchronous live classes, if you know that this student over here is a little bit weak with their language or they're not as confident with English, but this one, you know, is a little bit better in English, um, kind of pairing up and having them work together, sending them to a breakout room and having them work together, uh, you know, pair with really strategic pairing and grouping so that there's balance between technology skills and English abilities. So that would be engagement and that's enhancement. Now we're on the 30, which is extension. And this is using that technology tool for their own learning outside the classroom. So go ahead, Christy, you wanna read these? So yeah, if. I know at my school, we have a computer lab where students can go and they can use Burlington English and some other software programs. I don't remember all the names right now, but <laughs> you know, are they able to learn using Burlington English outside of class? Yeah, they can. Maybe not the engagement and um, perhaps not as much enhancement, okay? But are they able to use the technology sk uh, skills that you're you're having them use the tools that you're having them uh, use, and that creates opportunities to learn outside of school. So can they, can they transfer the use of this tool or the use of these skills that they're learning outside of the classroom? Does the technology create a bridge between school learning and their everyday life experiences? So something as simple as teaching students how to 
write an email and attach something that is, you know, a skill that they must have, you know, if they want to communicate with their kids, teachers, or they want need to do something for their work. So, you know, again, checking in with your students, seeing what they can and cannot already do, and thinking about what you do outside of, of your teaching, where you use technology, that's what we should be teaching students as well. Okay. And three, does the technology allow students to build skills that they can use in their everyday lives, as I already said? And I think thinking about the pandemic that we're all been going through, that we have learned this is very important because we all got stuck here, including our students. And people are saying, well, the students aren't learning anything now. And I don't believe so. I think we have all learned and the students have all learned a lot. And they've done a lot of extension. They have really been learning how technology can extend their everyday lives with this pandemic. So how do you know if your lesson hits the sweet spot? So this rubric is nice because every question, there are three questions for each E and every yes is two points. Every maybe or somewhat is one point. And if you have a no, it's zero points. And you can add up your points on each question for your lesson, just asking yourself three simple questions for each E. You can figure out where you fall. And what we want to do is not fall in the red light because red only reaches engagement. If you find yourself getting zero to six, you're really not using the framework and not integrating technology well. And what we want to do is get to the yellow and maybe the green. But you don't have to be perfect to get to the green. You just need to have some more yeses than noes. <laughs> so that is um, how you do it. And there's a really nice, simple rubric here. Let me, uh, let me get the link. So this little rubric, which is, um, let me give you the link in the chat box. So. Um, you can see it. I'll actually, you can just stick it, everything in there. You can decide and it will add it all up for you. It's like a mini calculator. So let's say this, and you have to put in your county. So I'm in, uh, well, I'll put with Christy of San Diego. And you just decide absolutely somewhat or not at all. And you go through and you just, decide, well, I don't have a lesson right now. We are going to have a lesson in a minute, but I just want to show you what it does. So it's nine questions you have to answer. That's it. And then you hit the next button and it will tell you what you got. So you can see I got a lot of red in here. This wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, a very simple way for you to just see how you're evaluating yourself, how your technology is fitting it. So I'm glad that you guys are all ESL. I just want to show you that later on, we do have a low beginning lesson if we want to evaluate. But right now, the first lesson we're going to be looking at is an intermediate level lesson, OK? And Christy and I are going to walk you through this lesson and go through the rubric. So what I'm going to do is open the lesson. And these are real lessons. so. Um, they may or may not be good. <laughs> there are lessons that both Christy and I have taught in the past. So um, we're sharing, I, I have it over here. Okay, we're sharing, let me get the rubric over here. And that way we can look at both at the same time. So we wanna share with you that we also don't have perfection. We're just humans like everybody else. and. We have good lessons and bad lessons. We're learning. Okay. Yeah. Good teachers continue learning. Correct. <laughs> okay. So I, I guess I'm going to have to make this like this. Let me see if I can make this smaller. There. And then we go here. Okay. Oh, California. San Diego. All right, so here's the lesson. And as we talk through it, we'll hit the what we think it is. All right. Okay, so it looks like this is a traditional grammar lesson. And we know students love grammar, they need grammar. 
Um, but let's see if the technology part of it is engaging. So it's about plural nouns, both regular and ir irregular. It kind of tries to include all the four skills, um, but mostly focusing on speaking and writing. Okay, so let's see. So we followed, it looks like that follows the WIPIA model for lesson planning. Not sure if you're familiar with that warm up review. So it depends, you know, a lot of times in ESL, our lesson is not encapsulated in one class meeting. So maybe we need to review from yesterday, pick up where we left off. So then it has introduction presentation. And then after that, students get practice and evaluation application. Okay, so let's see. So the warm up is just, you know, using items within the classroom and, um, and just saying, okay, here we have one chair. This is how many we have two. So just kind of a very basic warm up. I suppose maybe you could use pictures, you know, if you're teaching online right now. Um, then introduction, we need to create some motivation. So, um, hmm. so we're going to um, just pretty much tell them that this is going to be a lesson on noun plurals. Okay. And then, you know, maybe mention that, you know, if it's a regular plural, like one table, two table, we really need to pronounce the final S or, you know, maybe others are going to be, um, um, you know, not able to understand us. So now in the presentation mode, there's um, a slideshow. We're just going through some information. Um, hopefully we're having um, students take notes. We know that our adult students don't always know. Oh my gosh, it's 107. Wow. 107 slides. <laughs> 107 slides. <laughs> oh, so you see the, the teachers taking um, the students through the lesson, really a direct lesson with um, eliciting examples. Um, as I said, hopefully they're being active listeners with some sort of form for taking notes that the teacher has created. Okay, so that's that part. Um, later on, I think it does get to some pictures and so forth. And then let's see what's next. Oh, then it adds a little bit, throws it in there. You know, it is important when you're speaking of noun plurals that you have subject verb agreement. So it touches on that as well. So now it's time for students to practice. They've gotten all the input. How can we have them practice? Well, first we're gonna have them practice final S um, pronunci pronunciation. Um, let's see, what else are we gonna do? Um, we're gonna have them do some online exercises from a, an ESL website. So a little drill and practice, okay. Some students really, oh, chair, chairs, okay. Oh, you don't have to even type it, you just, oh, you just okay. have it here. Dress, dresses. That can be like a, a good little um, check in for the student to see if, um, see if the students are understanding. And then they're going to practice on a team competition. So this was actually when there was in person instruction. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, there are these little small whiteboards that you can buy. I got mine at the Dollar Tree and I got about 10 of them. And so you know, I was trying to have some um, activity where students were, um, were participating with teams and some movement. So here the teacher projects a noun and students have to work together really fast in their team to write the plural and hold up their little um, whiteboard. And then, you know, students, the fastest group with a correct spelling gets the point. Okay, that could be fun. Let me see, what does it say below that? It could also be played as a, a board race where students are running to the to the board. Just make sure that you don't have a math teacher next door. <laughs> that always <laughs> happens to me. It's too noisy. OK, evaluation. OK, so now we're going to do a short pronunciation, um, not necessarily on the irregular plurals, but students um, are going to have a, a slip of paper with um, some sentences that have regular noun plurals. Well, practice in class, they can listen to a recording of the teacher. And then the test is to record themselves either on Vocaroo or um, some other voice recorder. Or, you know, I often tell students, if you, you know, you can just call me and leave a message. So this is a very simple tool. I don't know if you know Vocaroo for creating audio files, for having students do pronunciation exercises they can send to you. They just press record and then they just put in your email and that's it. And this then is a um, recording. 
This is a recording. There. And now and if I share the sound. They, they send, um, they go to save and share and they can send the email to the teacher. Um, I find that- This you know, is a recording. Yeah, see, it's that easy. Mm -hmm. So I find this that- is a um, Sorry. <laughs> we do have at my school conversation classes that work a little bit on pronunciation. I, I teach a level class and students always want pronunciation. It's one of the harder things to do. So, so this was kind of nice where they got that practice, right? So it's grammar with some um, practice with um, the forms that they're using. And application, well, so there's the evaluation. Application is, well, just when they go to work. Um, they'll be better understood, hopefully, and they'll be able to use noun plurals more correctly and accurately. So let's look at the three E's rubric. Hmm. Okay, first question. Maybe if you can make it a little bit bigger, Susan, or I'm not sure. I can see it okay, but I don't know if everybody. Okay, so does the technology tool help students focus on the learning goals, content, with less distraction. Well, looking back, this was a true lesson that I taught before. And um, I love teaching grammar. I do, my students like it too, but this is rather dry. So um, does it, it does teach the content, but I'm, uh, when we're getting to engagement, I'm not sure. So let's, let's see that rubric one more time, Susan. Um, does it help them focus with la less distraction? Somewhat, I don't know, maybe, yeah, I, I think, think somewhat. somewhat. Do you so agree, somewhat. Susan? Okay. Yeah. Um, engagement, does the technology tool help motivate students to begin the learning process? So just by using any technology, we know there's engagement, but is it, does it motivate them? So they had, you had two tools in there. You had Google Slides and you had Vocaroo. Yeah. And so, the Google Slides was 107 slides. Yeah, I besides the little whiteboards, which I are not technology, they're manipulatives yeah. at least. I, I'm kind of towards the not at all. I'm I'm between somewhat and not at all. What do you guys think? Somewhat or not at all? You know that word motivation can be really <laughs> heavy hitting word. I I, it, I think, think for that one. It really would depend a lot on the student. I have students who love grammar and they don't want to, yeah, exactly. Thank you. It's it's teacher directed. But there's so, Vocaru, which is where they're really doing something using the vocabulary. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say something. And there's no co-use of the Vocaru at all, right? Um, I think you're yeah, right, teacher true. directed. And as you say this, I'm getting ideas how I could do this better. In the future, I would have students create a slideshow with the, the um, irregular noun plurals and some pictures and then have them kind of come up with the rules. I think that would have worked out so much better. Choose to okay. teacher directed. Engagement, does the technology cause a shift in the behavior of the students? Mm, where they move from mm -hmm. passive to active social. With the game, they're being social. So I would say somewhat, but a little bit low on the somewhat. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad there's not one between. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll say somewhat. We'll give you the benefit there. Okay, does the technology tool aid students in developing or demonstrating a more sophisticated understanding of the content? Create opportunities for creation, production over consumption. I'm sorry to say, I think this is purely consumption with the ex with the exception of the Vokaroo recording. Yeah, so, and I think with the, the slides of the students had made a couple of slides, maybe each group could have done a different rule. Yeah. That might have been more. Yeah, that would have been much more motivating and better enhancement. Okay, the next question in enhancement, does the technology create scaffolds to make it easier to understand concepts or ideas. I think I would want to know what the teacher did before, but um, I suppose that if this, this slideshow was shared with the students and they could return to it, maybe that could have been a scaffold, but I would say somewhat, but again, a little bit more towards the not at all. Yeah. Okay, and the third question of enhancement, does the technology create, create paths for students to demonstrate their understanding 
in a way they could not do with traditional tools. Well, when I think of the pronunciation quiz, I suppose I could have done one-to-one, -one, you know, sitting with the student or maybe breakout rooms in the Zoom meeting if we're teaching that way. Um, and very somewhat, I don't know. I'm feeling more and more negative about this, <laughs> this lesson all the time. Okay, now we have three questions about extension. So can they take what they've learned and use it outside of, of the classroom in their everyday lives? Does it create opportunities for them to learn outside of their, again, maybe if I shared the slideshow and they could review it on their phone or something, maybe, but they didn't see that in there. Not hmm. at all. I don't think so, unfortunately. Um, does the technology create a bridge? Yeah, somewhat. I mean, again, if, if they're working in a restaurant and people are not understanding them when they're talking about dish versus dishes, you know, hopefully the technology use with them, you know, listening and, and um, recording themselves and hearing themselves could be somewhat. And does it allow them to build skills that they can use in their everyday lives? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think, I don't think so, but I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure on that one. So shall we see what your score is? Yeah, drum roll. Dun, 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 dun. What did so I get? You got red, red, red. Oopsies. <laughs> red. There's no green Oopsies. There. But you see, um, the more I just use this little tool, the, the more I can look at my lessons and think, why was I controlling everything? <laughs> because I'm a control freak. How about if I give up some of the control to the students or at least give them some choices? So student autonomy and student choice. Are, and you know you what know, I, I found is that after I teach my lesson, I go through the rubric to see where I, I score. And I help it helps me to help the students to get to the more greenish area. Because if you do it before, you have a plan, right? You don't really know. But after you've taught the class, then you can go through the rubric and you can say, oh man, I could have done this. I could have shared the slides and they would have, you know, I could have had them make the slides. But unless you go through this, you don't really know that. That's right. So that is, um, now we're gonna do the wild and crazy thing. <laughs> so we really wanted to have breakout rooms, but we don't have breakout rooms. So we have made a way to do something, but it's gonna require you guys to help us out. Oh wait, we got something. Would adding the lesson slides, et cetera, to an LMS be considered an extension? I think, you know, it'd be a step in the right direction. Definitely. Yeah. At because, least the students could use it to, to, to refer back. Yeah. I mean, when I have, when I share a video in class, I always make it available before and after, because I have some folks who need to see it again and again, you know, in ESL, we have people whose um, four skills are not, not equal. I, I know that, you know, this, that some people come into our classes, maybe they're advanced, but they, they don't have speaking skills or listening skills. On the other hand, we have students who are fluent almost, but can't write. So I think, you know, anytime we can think about offering what we're sharing in class online in LMS or even shared with them by email, you know, no one wants to admit in class, oh, I don't understand. I want to see that again. They don't want to do that, right? So if we can offer it even before class sometimes, they're going to pick it up more times they see the content, the, the easier they'll be able to pick it up. And so, yeah, I think, I think that would be a step in the right uh, direction towards extension. Thank you for asking that. That's a great question. So everybody's ESL. Um, and um, we have, actually we have an intermediate advanced ESL in a low beginning. Um, and we have a career ESL vessel program here too. So what I want you to do is, I know you're not going to want to do math, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You Thank just you. put in the chat box which lesson you'd like to look at, and then we can figure out how to break you guys up. And I'm trying to remember what the... Oh, um, I'm not sharing. I'm sorry. That's How are you supposed to see what I'm, I'm doing? I'm trying to remember what the vessel one is Let me about. Share. So if, if am, you're I sharing the, am I sharing the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we see it. 
So these are the low beginning, advanced, intermediate, advanced, integrated, or vessel career ESL. I think it was, was it? I think it's about um, job hunt, you know? So I think the vessel career one, it's it's not really CT. It's, it's a little bit more towards um, when we teach students about employment. So yeah, we you, tried um, to come up with CTE lessons because it's important for CTE people, but we're not CTE teachers, so yeah, it's OTAN more ESL. Serves, OTAN serves many types of teachers, but ESL are always in the majority. Um, and the intermediate one, just to let you know, it's about shopping, especially bargain shopping. Okay, so I will tell you what, three people have said intermediate advanced. So um, you stay here with the intermediate advanced. Okay. And if you want low beginning, you're gonna go to this Zoom room. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through this just to see that I've got it in my mind what, what they're doing. So it starts off with just some conversation questions, just having students ask, uh, just asking students um, about their shopping practices. Okay, let me see. And then to create motivation, pretty much just tells them that they're going to practice grammar. So um, I'm not sure about that, but, and then uh, it looks like, you know, teaching them the grammar with a slideshow and taking notes on a handout. Okay, so a little technology there. And then um, kind of modeling. So the teacher said she needs a new refrigerator, kind of modeling. Um, after finding out what students think would be an important feature to get a good um, <laughs> refrigerator. So um, kind of surfing through those different sites and maybe even um, you know, on the whiteboard or if, on, if they're teaching in Zoom, maybe just on a document that they're projecting, kind of fill in a chart that they create to kind of model for the students how they can kind of take notes and then talking about the, the different refrigerators that they saw. Maybe it's the same make and model at all three stores, but maybe there are different prices or something. And then, um, then tell students that they're going to buy something online. So they can pretty much use any website, any sh online shopping website. And then they're going to, um, oh, actually they're working as a group. So they have to decide on one thing that they're gonna buy and um, it looks like they're going to use more than one website. So they need to, they, they need to you know, do some critical creative thinking about stores that are online that they can buy whatever they decide to buy. And then they need to work together to write comparative adjectives and adverbs and sentences with uh, superlatives. And then they also need to write one sentence about the one of the three um, different, the, the same item, three brands or whatever that they will buy and the one that they won't buy, definitely won't buy. And um, so I guess that, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting like kind of um, integration of grammar. It seems like it's kind of a little bit focused on grammar, but maybe when they're working together um, that will, kind of sink in for them. And then evidently what we'll do next is then independent. They're gonna go online themselves and take notes and make a, in this day, a poster presentation, I guess now it would be like, maybe they would just post to one slide of a shared Google slideshow or something. They could do it that way or just um, create a document, like a Word document and put in the pictures and things. And then application, well, hopefully then out in their everyday lives, instead of taking a day off of work <laughs> to go to different stores to find something that they need to find like an appliance, they could check online. Yeah, I do that. I know I do that. So um, Colleen, let me just, um, let me ask Susan to, yeah, you're welcome just to hear. Let me ask Susan um, to see if she can come back for a second. Um, so I don't know if this seems intermediate to you. I, I think it's a little bit advanced, but um, maybe there was a lot more that happened before this lesson. So you can you can unmute yourself and speak, or you can just type in the chat. Let's look at the rubric. So here we go. 
Again, I, I'm not sure why they have you choose the state. Maybe they're just trying to um, trying to see where teachers are <clears throat> using this uh, model the most. I'm in San Diego County, um, so there we go. Okay, so um, tell me what you think. You can either type, I think it'd be faster if you just type one, two, or three. So the first question is about engagement. Does the technology tool help students focus on the learning goals, the content with less distraction? So let me see, the technology tool, there were a couple. Um, there, there was a PowerPoint and um, a handout that students took notes on. Then there were the websites. Okay. And then and then students were creating a poster presentation. So what do you think? Do you think the technology tool, I guess, you know, when they're when they're focusing on, on a PowerPoint and they're taking notes on a form that matches up with the slides. What do you think? Absolutely, somewhat, or not at all? Does it help them focus? Yeah, I, I kind of agree there. Um, at least they're being active listeners if you do have a note-taking form. So I say somewhat, I mean, maybe it's not the most engaging, right? But at least, you know, hopefully they can focus on the content then. Um, probably, I, I would like to see the PowerPoint. Um, if it has a lot of picture cues and st instead of just students just listening to the lecture the whole time, that it's that the slides are infused with questions along the way, maybe polls. Thank you, Laura. That is so true. That is so true. Yes, the ads. Yeah, that's that's so frustrating. <laughs> and if you're ever if you're a teacher and you're presenting, you know something in a Zoom room from your computer, you know, like how there are cookies. So, you know, if I go on Amazon, I'm looking for, let's say something, you know, let's say underwear for women, then it's going to be on every website that I see and maybe I don't want them. Yeah, so you're right. That's a, something that is so frustrating with different websites. Um, I guess though, that, that would be a skill for students I know that that's a concern, especially for lower level, but for higher level, um, maybe helping them discern between, is this authentic material? Uh, how do, where do I find the real price here among all of this, all of this noise on the page? Yeah. So engagement, does the technology tool help to motivate students to begin the learning process? Well, let's look in the, the beginning part. Yeah, I, I do like to start my classes with some questions to the students or conversation between the students. So that, yeah, I think, um, so if I'm teaching synchronously in Zoom, Zoom, I probably preview the questions, send them to the breakout rooms, come back and have just a few people share out some important points. So I don't see much technology in the warm up or review. And this is supposed to be the part of your lesson that motivates the introduction. Just telling them that you're gonna learn about grammar. Mm, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think that they'll be motivated? Do you think this motivates the students, the technology used? You can, you can I, I'd probably between here, I wouldn't say absolutely, but somewhat or not at all. Somewhat, okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, again, anytime you use technology, the students are there looking at it. So there's engagement, whether it's motivating engagement or not, it's hard to tell, yeah. So let's put somewhat, okay. The third engagement question is, okay, now does this technology cause a shift in the behavior? So are they just interacting with the technology passively, just kind of like listening, you know, um, what's the other uh, pass, like listening and just reading? Is it just listening and reading a website or are they having to interact with each other? Um, for that one, I don't know about the shift in behavior, but if we look back at that, when they are in this part, 
here they're actually looking at three suggested you know websites or you know they could use an, uh, another one that they know and let's see it looks like then here in the second in the communicative practice they are having to work together and what what i do like is if i were the teacher in this particular lesson and they were in breakout rooms or in small groups in the classroom is i would really walk around and hear how they are using or explaining the grammar to each other um, although it's not completely grammar focused as part of the outcome of this lesson um, and then students are going to make a presentation to the class about what they found and we found that <clears throat> GE is more expensive than Whirlpool or whatever. So let's see here. The shift in behavior is a little bit interesting, but I do you think there's co-use? They're being a little bit active in that part. Would you agree? So I, I'm, I'm, thank you. I'm not, you think absolutely. Okay, thank you. One good thing about this lesson. One, one, three, right? Okay, then the next three questions are about enhancement. So taking what they learn or what they use or skills they gained in the class to their lives outside of class. So does the technology tool aid students in developing or demonstrating a more sophisticated understanding of the content? creates opportunities for creation, production. You know, when I look at that team project, they're going to produce something. Yeah. And then they're, so they're kind of doing it together. It's, I think that I like about this, I would say, as far as the lesson plan, I don't know about the technology, but as far as the lesson plan, it's, I do, no, it's, sorry, it's, we do together, teacher modeling, you groups do together and then you do it individually. So it's kind of scaffold. It's got the scaffolding like that. So I like that part, but let's see, what is the question again? Does the technology aid students in developing or demonstrating more sophisticated understanding of the content with creation production? What do you think? Christy, I came back because I saw your text message. Yeah, Col Colleen couldn't get into your room. So she's just here. Okay, but, so um, I can, should I leave or should I take Colleen? I don't know, Colleen, do you want to go join the other group or do you want to just stay here? Because we're almost finished here, I think. Yeah, we're almost finished. Too. Yeah, we're getting close. We're on enhancement. Okay, so I'll go back. Okay, so Xian Mi, um, thank you. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. Xian Mi? I hope that's right. Um, somewhat, okay. Okay, thank you, Colleen. Somewhat, right? <clears throat> you think it does okay yeah i mean yeah and that, that's a great point you know laura if they're looking at some of the websites they can they can start seeing um the what kind of language is used in the um comments in the buyer reviews that would be yeah that would be really good for them again you might get into some language that you don't want them to see i don't know it's hard to tell but I guess they are adults, right? And then does the technology create scaffolds to make it easier to understand concepts or ideas? Um, I kind of mentioned that, but is it technology? It's, well, the lesson is good. I wonder if the technology is as good because the lesson takes it from activating background knowledge with some com conversation questions to some grammar, and then let's use the grammar, but I'll model, then you do it in a group and then you do it by yourself. So, hmm, scaffolds. Does the technology create scaffolds? What do you think? Do you think that's somewhat absolutely? I think it does, but I'm not sure if it's absolutely. I think it would depend on I, that grammar, part I'm not really sure about. I'd, I would like to see that PowerPoint, but it is a publisher's PowerPoint. So it's probably, um, <clears throat> it's probably got a lot of the rules. It's, it maybe not have as, as many images and elicitation. I think it was published, if you know the Azar books, I think it was published for 
teacher use, but it could be used for self-study for students too, I guess. Do you all agree that I'm gonna, do you think okay with somewhat? I would say somewhat, I'm, I'm towards absolutely because I like what the teacher did as far as the scaffolding. We do, I always forget the order. You, I do, we, I, I do, we do, you do, there we go. So I'm gonna put somewhat. Okay, <clears throat> enhancement. Does the technology create paths for students to demonstrate their understanding of the learning goals in a way they could not do with traditional tools? I forgot to look very closely at the objective of the lesson. So here are the classes content standards. Um, here's the objective. Students will be able to compare products and make wise buying choices. So does it create paths for students to demonstrate their, okay, let's, so, so the paths are group work and individual group. Could they do that with, well, in, in that lesson at the end, they make a poster presentation. So that's kind of traditional. Um, if I were teaching that online, I think that um, I would create a, a shared Google slideshow and give every student their own slide or something, just to make it easier. Everything's compiled in one place. Although, you know, they could create a poster at home and just show it on camera. What do you all think? Does it create paths for students to demonstrate their understanding in a way they could not do with traditional tools? Somewhat too, I think the tools there are pretty traditional already. So, um, yeah, yes and no, right? I mean, obviously when you're using the you know websites for stores, that is a lot different than looking at a catalog <laughs> like we used to get in the mail, right? So <clears throat> yeah, hopefully they're having to navigate, they're having to search, they're, going, they're having to um, go back and forward in the website. So they're using a lot of skills there. And the final questions are extension. Does the technology create opportunities for students to learn outside of their typical school day? Well, the, at the end, it's hoping that that would be, that they'll now know how to use websites for department stores. You know, it depends on the student. Some of them may have already learned that, already do that, but I don't know. Um, maybe not so much. I wonder. I mean, I think everybody knows Amazon, but I don't know if everybody knows that you don't have to go to Lowe's and Home Depot and all the stores, that you can just search for the information online. So, um, I, you know, some people, that's their preferred way of shopping. But so let me see that question again. Can they learn outside of their typical school day? I'm I'm somewhat and absolutely, I'm in between. Who makes the deciding vote? What do you think? I would hope that they make that connection that I can, I can just search online to see what the price is at this store versus this store. I can save gas. I don't have to drive. I don't have to wear a mask. Okay, somewhat, thank you. And the two last question, does the technology create a bridge between school learning and their everyday life experiences. What do you think of that? So they're learning in school how to shop and will that help? Absolutely. Okay, we have somewhat, somewhat, absolutely. Okay, well, we got one, one good one there. And the last one, are they building skills that they can use in their everyday lives? One thing this lesson doesn't have as far as the language is um, maybe, I would assume that the teacher taught this, but that when they go into their breakout rooms for that for that practice where they're um, where they're looking at different websites together as a group, hopefully they know all those kind of strategic language um, phrases like "What do you think?" "Oh, I disagree." "Why do you say that?" But um, that's the language part. But building skills that they can use in their everyday lives. What do you think? Somewhat or absolutely? Um, I'm in between for all of these. I'm a little bit in between. What do you think? Absolutely. Okay, thank you.
Let's have a check. Let's see here. Well, we have a ways to go. <laughs> we we have some um we have a ways to go here. So um hopefully as we were looking at that at that lesson, you come came up with some ideas. I know I did. I mean, I was just thinking this is how I would do that differently. Um I would, yeah, go ahead. Um, I think my people got lost. Uh oh. They didn't come back. Oh no. So I don't know what to do now because I I'm, I'm, he I'm here. Oh, you're here. Yeah, oh, okay. I don't think Evelyn is here. <laughs> yeah, Laura, that's a great point. <laughs> Would love to see a lesson that scores a green light. I as wonder well. if Evelyn forgot nope, Anthony. I, no, I'm here. I'm, okay, everybody made it. Oh, no. thank yeah. goodness. I was worried. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for worrying about me. Because <laughs> I don't see you in the attendees, but I guess you're there. Okay, good. Susan, do you want me to stop sharing my screen? You want to take it back? No, I mean, are you finished? We, we just finished scoring the lesson. We didn't okay. um, really um, get too far into discussing what we would do differently or anything, but I think maybe we could do that. Each group um, could do that kind of all together, maybe. Okay, so let me share the I'll screen. Sharing. Yeah, so we can look at the PowerPoint because we have the questions we want them so, to answer. Um, Susan, Laura said she would love to see um, a lesson that has all green, or is there any place where we can see lessons that hit the sweet spot for every single E? Okay, we'll get there at the end. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share with you uh, a possibility for more training. Okay. Um, but let's let's go th through. Um, mine came pretty close, right? You guys, the one that we did came pretty close to all green. There were a couple of spaces. So this is what our report back is. Are you seeing the PowerPoint okay, everybody? Yes. Okay, it says I'm muted, but I'm not muted because you're talking to me. Um, so it says here, summarize the lesson in one sentence. What was good? What needs improvement? And what score did you get? So um, could one of my groups, people in my group answer the questions about the lesson we did? I can summarize it. Thank you. Um, Susan's lesson was uh, having the students identify car parts. And what was good about it was she included a variety of technology. In the beginning, uh, it, she motivated the students and by showing them a YouTube video. But they watched it the first time and they made some connections with it and it was very engaging. And then after that, she taught them, uh, she used the slideshow, Google Slides, to identify car parts and taught them that vocabulary. But then they went back again and watched the video and they had to find the car parts that they, um, the vocabulary they had been working on. So they got to rewatch the video again. After that, another good part uh, was that the students were able to, to use their mobile phones to take pictures, but then she also had them uh, center the picture so they had to learn they had to know how to use whatsapp or remind and add, attach the images so that was really very very good the improvement part uh we talked about what was it oh having the students create more instead of it them just the consumption part of it and the other part was the last one which was the extension activity we thought maybe there could have been more work with that and the last question, what score did she get? She received a 16 out of 18 on her lesson. So that was in the green zone. <laughs> yes, we loved it. And I think we talked about, um, we talked about how I could have had the students do total physical response to actually take the photos that they took and create a PowerPoint of their own would have made it a sweet spot lesson. So that's ours. And Christy, do your, does your group want to go? Is there anybody from our group who would want to summarize the lesson in one sentence and answer these other questions? Uh, well, I wasn't really prepared to do this, but I'll give it a try. <laughs> the uh, I might need some help, Christy. Um, summarizing the lesson. The lesson was about um, using the superlative adjective. 
adjectives and adverbs, um, learning how to use those by comparing prices for something they were gonna buy like an appliance. And they used the internet to search on websites and had to uh, make a choice as to what would be the, was it the best buy or the one that they would choose? Am I on track so far? Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Sounds like a really um, important life skill these days. Well, it is, it is. And I think what was good about it was that it really does um, uh, help to reinforce and maybe to introduce to some students who aren't used to shopping online, um, you know, the, the um, easy way to get product information from many different stores just by searching on their websites. And I think that, um, you know, they can get a lot of information um, quickly by doing that. Um, I think what needs improvement is the uh, reporting back, the, the project, the poster board, uh, rather than a poster board, it could be, um, you know, using a Google slide and they could, you know, uh, maybe get a picture of the appliance, the price, the store name, and they could display all that. Um, instead of on a poster board, they could do it in a Google slide and then they could present that um, to the students. So I think the score was a 12 out of 18. Well, that's pretty good. That's right. was, yeah. it, well, was it in the yellow zone or is that, yeah, that's like the edge of the almost green. That is so yeah, close almost to green. green. <laughs> right. <laughs> and again, this is Christy. Um, every time I look at a lesson with, with uh, I, I see new things. <laughs> it's funny because I was just thinking about teaching students about teaching online. Something that's left out of that lesson is really important is uh, being safe and secure shopping online. Mm -hmm. I speak from experience. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah. And, you know, this is the thing about this framework is that it's always, we go through it all the time with our lessons because it's so helpful to have that discussion with yourself about whether whether it, it works or not. Um, I think I'm gonna skip this reflection because um, let's just go on because I think we have not enough time to do all this. So um, just let's go over the objectives and make sure you guys under, see if you got all your objectives that we promised you. So you know what the three E's are? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you use the triple E rubric to evaluate a lesson. Yep. And you critically analyze and discuss the lesson using the rubric, correct? Mm -hmm. So um, we hope that um, you got a lot out of this and you'll use this rubric, but um, I want to know if you're interested in learning more because we are actually, OTAN is creating a course that we're gonna pilot in July. And it would be a five week course on the triple E framework where you would be able to dive deeper in there and find lessons that have. Um, actually, what we do is we take a lesson that was a normal lesson and we show you how to add each E into the lesson little by little. And at the end, you'll have the perfect sweet spot lesson, we hope. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about this, you want to click on this. I have a QR code and I have, let me give you the link so we can get in touch with you because we're going to pilot it. It's probably going to be a self-study course eventually. Let me put the link in there for you. But here we go. But um, this form, you can fill it out and just say, what is your name and what is your email? And then I know that you want to learn more. You don't have to do anything more than that. And um, we have taken all the things that Christy and I have learned, and we have got a whole bunch, a cadre of other subject matter, matter experts, and we have lessons and lessons and all kinds of lessons. So it will be a really good way for you to get into a, uh, a cooperative group to have discussions about your lessons to make them better. Good question, um, uh, Susan. How intensive is it? How many hours per week would you say that the course takes? We are expecting that you will uh, spend maybe an hour outside the course and an What's hour that? inside the course with us. Like we have, we're gonna have the first, the pilot we're gonna actually facilitate so that I wouldn't say 
you know, it's five weeks, but it's a little bit every week. So it wouldn't be too much work. Okay. This is the kind of question we need to answer. That's why we're piloting. Um, because we do want it to be self-study eventually so that people can just go through it. And we have discussion forums. We have a book, a free book you're going to get. It's all done on Moodle. And um, Christy will probably be teaching it as well. <laughs> so let me check. So um, we get to see some lessons that are in, all in the green zone and create a lesson that we have evaluated by our peers and by the facilitators. Is that right? The way we start is by teaching the each E. And then we bring in a lesson that has zero E's. Oh. And then okay. we add the E's each week to the lesson. So by the end of the, the, the class, you have the perfect lesson. Sounds good. And then you'll learn. And we have the, the best part of this. And um, I'm not going to give away too much. But the best part of this is we have a cheat sheet with each of the E's of a variety of activities you can use for each E. So um, that cheat sheet alone is worth the course, free course. <laughs> so um, yeah, and, and that was developed by Debbie Jen Jensen, one of our SMEs. And um, it's really a nice cheat sheet. Sounds great. So um, beyond that, we hope that you've learned a lot here. We want to thank you and we want to ask, please fill in the evaluation. There are, this has been a small group today, a, a dynamic but small group. Um, and we really need everybody to fill in the evaluation because that's how um, workshops get popular or not. <laughs> so um, if you would mind filling out the evaluation, let me give you the link. It's, uh, hold on. You've probably filled out these evaluations before. Let's see if I can get the link over here. Susan, I popped it in the chat. Oh, but thank if, you. If you want to copy and paste it again, that'd be that'd be good too. And hopefully you've learned something today from us. Um, Christy and I are really passionate about this, um, this framework. Uh, we feel like it really does help students progress their learning goals. And uh, we feel like it's a better framework than the other ones that are out there. And so that's why we're trying to popularize it. And we have, uh, Liz is the woman who created the framework is really happy that adult educators are starting to use it. And the, the book that she has, I, I, there is a picture, there is a book that's been written. There's actually two books she's written on this. And um, it's published by ISTE if you're interested. The only problem with these books is that all the lessons are K-12 lessons and um, don't necessarily apply, but the theory is very sound in the first part of the book. And our goal is to have um, the teaching with technology database to be all lessons that fit triple E. So that pretty soon you'll be able to search for a good lesson and just find it there. <laughs>